Good morning from Miami Beach. This is Dr. John Bennett of Neurosurgical TV. We have another episode of Neurosurgery Super Sunday based in Nepal with Ipsharian. Today we have Edmundo Valencia. He's going to give a lecture on uh, why you should do cisternostomy. Uh, but first, let's induce, uh, introduce the panelists. Let's introduce Ipe first. Hey, Ipe. Hi, John. All good? Uh, very so, good. Yeah, we've been having this uh, small exchanges uh, with uh, the rest of the world about why is it important to go ahead and uh, do cystinostomy in trauma. There are many reasons, uh, but what we are trying to do is debunk the evidence-based system, which means these days people are asking for every single thing they're asking for evidence and this is uh, sought as a way to defeat good things and to put in whatever other people vested interest if somebody has the best way to put in something is through evidence-based uh, medicines so also the developing countries neurosurgeons the young neurosurgeons are not differentiating between what is good neurosurgery versus evidence-based medicine in a country like, uh, in a country from Africa or Asia or Latin America, what people need is good neurosurgery, not evidence based medicine. So they cannot operate with evidence based medicine. So what we are trying to do is debunk this concept of evidence based medicine. Also, bring neurosurgeons into good surgery, train them for good surgery, push for development, and this is what we are trying to do. You can hear me clearly, John? Yes. Yes, we can hear you clearly. Okay, so Edmundo will start. Edmundo and uh, Shai. Okay. Can we, can we introduce, uh, let's introduce the panelists first of all. Oh, yes, please introduce the gentleman next to you, Ipe. Hello? Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I'm Dr. Shanmu from India. I finished my new surgery last year. Just doing my fellowship with for the board one Okay, well, welcome. Young Hong, are you there? Can you say hi to Ipe and the, and, and the associates? Young Hong, are you there? Yes, but my video cannot work this evening, sorry. So, very no, no. nice uh, to meet you. So, I, I, uh, I recently I have some uh, prepared for uh, this me paper about uh, recovery bowl. So um, you might set I have about uh, twenty p patients. Uh, more uh, at ICP is more than thirty uh, millimeter mercury. So I as uh, this patient I recoverable. Okay. That's okay. Good. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll just present everyone first, and and mm -hmm. we're gonna try to fill the void of conferences being canceled in China. Okay, uh, Jake, uh, Dr. Pathaban, could you please uh, say hello? Yeah, hello to all my friends. I think uh, it's a nice day uh, to have a good discussion on this Very good. Uh, thank you, thank you. Thank, I'll thank be you. Yeah. Hello, Remy. John. Yeah, could you please introduce yourself? Hello, Mr. John. Uh, thank you, everyone. Me, everyone. I say hello to everyone. Uh, now I am in Mauritania. I left France uh, three months ago. Okay, in Mauritania, excellent. Musindo, are you Musindo of Mozambique? Are you there, Musindo? Uh, perhaps not. Okay, and Mundo, why don't you start? And welcome. Thank you. Okay, sure. I'm gonna share the <clears throat> the screen. Okay. Okay, everybody. Can you can you see the, the my screen? Yes. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes. You have to yes. make it bigger. You have to make the screen bigger. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Excellent. So. Uh, 
We will talk about cystinostomy. I'm Dr. Edmundo Valencia from Peru. I'm neurosurgery resident and uh, fellow, fellow resident uh, here with Dr. Ayb Chirion. Uh, so, <clears throat> what is uh, tra traumatic brain injury? Uh, the severe traumatic brain injury is the main cause of uh, morbidity and mortality. Uh, in neurosurgery in our field so in in most of the countries all over the world is the major cause of death and disability and it also costs uh, millions of dollars for health systems and uh, for the families and uh, relatives of, of the patients um, unfortunately after trauma occurs we cannot do anything uh, with the damage caused by the primary injury um, uh, this primary injury is the direct uh, physical damage to the brain and surrounding tissues. Um, however, all our effort uh, is focused to stop or reduce as much as possible the secondary injury. Uh, and uh, this is the inflammatory process and metabolic changes, uh, which produces uh, edema, intracranial hypertension, and uh, finally ischemia. Uh, so that's exactly what our work is focused on, uh, to prevent or reduce the post-traumatic uh, brain edema. <clears throat> so the compressive craniectomy, <clears throat> this is the, um, nowadays this is the standard in the treatment for, um, for, um, uh, brain edema after trauma. So, uh, uh, using the logic that uh, if there is high pressure into the box, let's open the box, right? This is the, the old uh, logic that that we learned. But, uh, so, the compressive craniotomy is performed to allow uh, the swelling brain expands uh, without being squeezed into the skull. So that's how more than uh, more than a hundred years ago, uh, Kocher and uh, uh, Cushing reported the use of large decompressive uh, craniectomies for patients with raised intracranial pressure after traumatic brain injury. Uh, but even before, even before Hippocrates had uh, records of cranial trepanation post trauma in the first century. Uh, this is almost uh, uh, 2,000 years ago. So this procedure is logically correct if we don't know the uh, pathophysiology that occurs after trauma, uh, uh, I mean after brain injury. Uh, so that's how the cisternostomy itself uh, is based on researches and new information about the swelling mechanisms uh, of the brain. So here we can see some images and uh, we cannot see the cisterns and subarachnoid space. But uh, where the water goes? And, and here we have also more images. So uh, we cannot see the subarachnoidal space and uh, the ventricles are um, compressed. This is a very swelling brain. Uh, but the CSF inside the, the uh, ventricle, ventricular system and, and subarachnoid space should go somewhere. So, Uh, to understand how shift edema develops, we should consider some important uh, issues about uh, CSF. So, is it possible to compress water? Uh, actually, the answer is yes. Uh, actually, any substance can be compressed. But here we can see that uh, only gases are easy to compress. Uh, liquids and uh, solids are very, very difficult to compress. Uh, but what pressure we need to compress water? If we have 100 liters of water and we apply one ton 
uh, per uh, square centimeter. So the water volume decreases only four liters. So finally we have 96 liters. Uh, if we apply this physics to the CSF, we would need an enormous pressure to compress the CSF. Um, then it's not possible to compress the CSF into the uh, skull. Uh, so the CSF uh, doesn't get compressed. It only goes somewhere. But where it goes? It goes to the virtual rowing space. <clears throat> the CSF, uh, the CSF uh, goes into the parenchymal space uh, through these uh, structures called virt virtual rowing space. Uh, through the paraarterial space, uh, this, the CSF flows uh, towards the brain, as we can see here. Through the paraarterial uh, uh, space, the, the CSF flows into the brain, and through the paravenous space, it flows in the contrary sense. It means from the brain, uh, uh, even collecting some uh, waste products from the cell metabolism and everything, uh, the CSF comes out from the brain. So uh, this system is called the glymphatic pathway. Uh, this water flux in, in, uh, is incoming and outcoming. Uh, is possible because of the undulatory movement of capillary vessels. Like uh, it's, this is like peristaltic movements that pumps the blood into the vessel and the water into the paravascular space. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, this this movement follows the same. The, the same uh, direction of the blood. So this process uh, occurs in normal conditions. There is a continuous flux of water in this lymphatic pathway. But uh, when something alters this process, for example, uh, a traumatic, traumatic brain injury, so uh, the volume <clears throat> or, or the osmotic pressure increases into the cisterns and uh, subarachnoidal uh, space, and the CSF uh, shift edema is triggered. <coughs> so, in few words, uh, this uh, this uh, the shift the CSF shift edema. <coughs> Uh, is the passage of CSF from the subarachnoid uh, space and cisterns to the virtual robin space. But uh, how it happens? Uh, <clears throat> and uh, this is important to understand uh, why uh, cisternostomy is performed. So here, after traumatic brain injury, uh, there is a capillary bleeding. Uh, even if this bleeding is very small, it goes into the subarachnoid space, as we can see in the in the diagram. So it increases the volume and the osmotic pressure inside the cisterns and uh, inside the subarachnoid space. Uh, this bleeding occurs in a, uh, actually relatively lower pressure, but it can continue for a longer time until the intracranial pressure is equal to the arterial, arterial pressure. So here we can see how it continues flowing and increasing the, the pressure in the virtual rowing space. And finally it goes to the interstitial space uh, it accumulates uh, in that space and, of course, increases the intracranial pressure. Uh, and now the decision or uh, the surgical decision is taken. Uh, in this case, we can uh, see this uh, representation of uh, the compressive craniectomy. Uh, but uh, we we are not stopping this process. So the brain starts starts bulging out of the 
skull. Uh, we are not uh, uh, stopping this process. Uh, we are only allowing the brain uh, to, to go in out and the process continues. <clears throat> so in the, uh, immediately after the, the decompressive craniectomy, we can see maybe some, uh, I mean, we, we uh, relieve the, the intracranial pressure, but only for, for uh, the, the first moment after the, the surgery. After that, the process continues and the, and the brain bulges, as we can see here. Uh, so, in this case, we have complications. The complications of the compressive craniectomy uh, are developed. So, brain herniation through the craniectomy. And uh, in severe cases uh, of brain herniation, it produces axonal damage due to axonal stretching when the parenchyma bulges out of the skull. It will produce irreversible da damage to the neural pathways, uh, with a, of course, with a poor outcome. Uh, of the patient. But uh, we come back to this stage when we have uh, raised uh, intracranial pressure. And uh, so what do we do in this stage of brain swelling? When we perfor perform a uh, cisternostomy, uh, We open the cisterns, and uh, uh, nowadays we uh, we put in, in 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 the cistern the um, a catheter. So uh, uh, we open the cisterns to the atmospheric pressure, um, specifically the mem membrane of Lilyquist. So uh, it allows to reverse the flow of the CSF. Um, so. As we can see in this diagram, uh, the water flows from the edematous brain parenchyma to the cisterns. Uh, this, the flow is reversed, so the edema decreases. And uh, this catheter is, uh, we, uh, we put this catheter and we take it out in around four or five days, days after surgery. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, all this process of all this uh, procedure uh, will reverse the direction of the shift edema, not only alleviating the brain swelling but also allowing to wash out uh, some substances, such as uh, lactate uh, as well as other ar ar harmful system substances uh, like uh, excitotoxic neurotransmitters. Uh, free ox oxy oxygen radicals and uh, uh, and so on. So if, if those substances accumulate in the damaged brain, it would produce vasogenic and cytotoxic edema, uh, triggering inflammation with cellular damage and, uh, of course, by patient uh, uh, deterioration. So, uh, This paper was published uh, around a month ago. Um, it's comparing the, um, the outcome of patients uh, who were treated with uh, uh, the compressive hemicranectomy versus cisternostomy. So uh, they perform a retrospective analysis uh, in adult patients admitted with traumatic brain injury. Uh, they were treated with adjuvant cisternostomy uh, or, or, or the compressive craniectomy alone. And uh, those cases were made um, in around five years between uh, 2013 to 2018 or 19. Uh, so they also separated patients in two groups. Uh, uh, performing surgery as a primary procedure or secondary procedure. Uh, some of the important re uh, results in this in this research was um, 
are represented in this graphic. And uh, DC is the compressive craniotomy, and EC is uh, adjuvant cisternostomy. So the best result was when the procedure was done in as a primary procedure um, early after after trauma. So we can see the big difference between the the results. Um, be, uh, of the, the compressive femicranectomy uh, versus uh, adjuvant cisternostomy. Uh, the, the favorable results for cisternostomy was um, uh, had a big difference um, if we compare with the, the compressive craniectomy. Uh, actually, when, when they performed that procedure as a secondary surgery, as a secondary procedure, the result was not so different, but finally, uh, the overall group, in the overall group, the, you can see here the, the difference between the favorable and unfavorable uh, results. And this is the conclusion. Uh, they concluded that cystenostomy is a feasible and safe procedure of, uh, and of course safe uh, in trained hands. That's why it's very important the, the training in skills and uh, knowledge of, uh, of anatomy. Uh, there is also a relevant improvement in patients' outcome. Uh, the cistern drainage improved uh, brain oxygenation and better control of uh, intracranial pressure. And uh, other additional benefits uh, is the reduced duration of mechanical ventilation and of course the in uh, intensive care unit stay of the patient. Uh, all of this reduces costs. Uh, so here I want to show you a couple of videos. Yes, we can see it. Okay, perfect. So uh, here you can see the, the dura was opened and uh, the brain was tight, not extremely tight, but it was tight. Uh, this brain is of course not, not laxed. Uh, so here we make the approach towards the uh, optic nerve and we reach we reach the optic nerve in this region we have a uh, frontal lobe temporal lobe and uh, we're doing the dissection Mentioned that it was done by a consultant who was just finishing research mm -hmm. two years after. This this procedure was uh, was uh, done by a consultant who finished uh, one or two years before the, his res residency. So he's a young neurosurgeon, and we can see how he performs this uh, surgery. So here we can see the optic nerve, carotid. And here the membrane of Liliquist is opened and uh, then a catheter for, for CSF drainage is uh, put in, in this place. So the surgery is finished. Uh, we only need to fix the, the catheter and uh, and close the and, and and close our approach. And the next video can you see the video? Yes we can. Excellent. So uh, 
in this video we can we can see clearly that the brain is very tight so even even during the the zero matter opening we can see the the, the brain budging because of the uh, increased intracranial pressure So the, the same procedure, we have to uh, first find uh, the optic nerve, is our, our landmark. And then the carotid, we will see here. This brain was very, very tight. So here we can see the, the optic nerve. and the carotid artery here. Opening the uh, optical uh, optical carotid membrane here, and then the membrane of Lilyquist. Oh, sorry. So here we have this, this space, and then we can put the caster. Basilar. The, the basilar is in the bottom, you can see here. The basilar artery, so. So we put the catheter, finally. And here we can see how lax is the brain uh, after opening cisterns. And, and draining CSF. Uh, here, uh, uh, I show you this this uh, part, uh, the, this video uh, to you see how is the brain is very tight during the, the, the dura opening and how is the brain after cisternostomy after open cisterns and after drain the, the CSF and here you can see that the brain is completely lax The cassister is in, in place and is draining draining the CSF. Okay, so uh our conclusions, uh, the cisternostomy is a new surgical technique for the treatment of uh, traumatic brain injury. Uh, it's a modern surgical technique uh, for the management of, or of TBI. Uh, so, but it's based on new knowledge about uh, physiopathological process involving the brain swelling uh, secondary to uh, TBI. Uh, with better results than traditional treatments or procedures. And uh, it also brings neurosurgery to the surgical treatment. Uh, it brings microsurgery to the treatment of trauma. 
So developing surgical skills and, and uh, skull-based anatomy knowledge is mandatory to perform uh, um, and this surgery. So uh, the, the most important thing is that cisternostomy has a better outcome uh, for the patient with less complications and less disabilities compared with other treatments. Uh, and of course, it also includes benefits for the health systems, uh, reducing the stay in the uh, intensive care unit and uh, uh, the use of uh, mechanical ventilation. I would like to finish uh, sharing you this uh, phrase, the progress is not possible without changes. So we need to make changes. Thank you very much. Okay, Edmundo, thank you very much, excellent. Uh, before we open it up to, for discussion, let me introduce a couple of late arrivals. Hello, Sugar. Please, please introduce yourself. Hi, John. My name is Sugar Inocosa. I'm a neurosurgeon from Peru. And I have been with Professor Churian for the last year for four months seeing all these cisternostomy advances. And I'm really, really keen to try this and to push it to the next level. I mean, trauma is a big, big part of neurosurgery. And I think this procedure will change all the pictures about this. Okay, Manuel, could you say hello to everyone? Manuel, I believe you're from Russia, correct? Oh, Manuel yeah. from Mexico. Okay. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, yes. John. Yeah, I'm from Mexico. Uh, okay. um, I uh, was with the professor Sherian last year for two months and learned how to do cisternostomy. Looks like we're um, waking you up early. Yeah. <laughs> one of my, uh, one, I know for you it's nothing. <laughs> you are always <laughs> that way. Well, Okay, yeah. uh, welcome. Okay, uh, okay, we can open for discussion, and I don't know if Ipe wants to lead it or whoever. Uh, so, okay, the floor is open. Good to see you, Manuel. Thanks, Ipe. Uh, I have one question. Uh, I know that um, um, uh, you don't do a Sylvian dissection for, for cisternostomy, but uh, what do you think about doing a little of Sylvian dissection to reduce the retraction of the frontal lobe? Only for uh, reducing the traction. Okay. Uh, Manuel, uh, these brains are very different from uh, the usual aneurysm of the tumor brain. I mean, I obviously I agree that in our three unlockings, if you see, our principle of unlocking is the first unlocking is the sagittal unlocking where you open up the brain like that. That is a sphenoid ridge and anticlinoidectomy. That is sagittal unlocking. The second unlocking is a axial unlocking where you take out the temporal lobe laterally from the cavernous sinus. So that there is called axial unlocking for getting into interpretangular cistern and all that. And the third unlocking, of course, is the sylvian dissection or mm -hmm. oblique interpural unlocking. But mm -hmm. the problem in trauma brain is that uh, the sylvian is full. And because mm -hmm. of the ICP, all the veins are full. You know, mm -hmm. the veins are usually full in, uh, in when the patient has raised the ICP. You must, uh, you must have noticed that the venous bleeding is very high. Mm -hmm. On the other mm -hmm. hand, if you open the cisterns, the venous pressure is going to go low and in this case you can maybe think about a little bit of proximal sylvian dissection but not mm -hmm. before if you try to open the arachnoid there before you will have you know brain and blood leaking out because um, in this time the best thing that you have to do is you have to go sub i mean subfrontal just above the planum get into the mm -hmm. optic nerve separate uh, the brain and uh, open the cisterns and get get as much CSF and wash it out as much as possible. Sylvian dissection in this time is extremely difficult and I would say impractical at this time. But otherwise, if you want to get into the base of the skull uh, to get into the cistern, sylvian dissection is a very, very important adjunct. Okay, thanks. Okay.
Any other comments, questions? Bhakti Ben Wang. Yeah, I agree. Uh, agree with uh, what I is telling. Uh, it's very difficult to open the Sylvian systems uh, in dramatic brain injury because the edema is pretty high at that time. But when you start opening the edura, it start bulging out. Now I saw mm -hmm. uh, that one of the uh, videos where um, uh, the, the dura is not completely open. And actually mm -hmm. it's a good idea. That's what I do. Now I start doing that the dura is open very less at the, at the base. And mm -hmm. you, you leave it and remove the subdural if you have, and then go to the base. And uh, this gives one big plus point that the, the brain is not going to bulge out and create a lot of problems. So mm -hmm. the dura protects, actually dura keeps the brain intact there. It, it is good for you so that it won't come out. It will not disturb okay. your surgery completely. As he said that you can go to the frontal base and keep crawling. Just keep walk over the frontal base, reach the optic nerve, lift it and open out a few of the arachnoids. You see the CSF coming out. Just patiently wait and wait and wait and you see the complete changes happen. Okay. That's all. Okay. Just have to wait. Amazing what as he showed in that, you just have to wait for some time for the CSO to come in and then you do the saline irrigation, you can do the, uh, you can push the, your fluids to discharge the subarachnoid hemorrhages and more CSO start coming out. Then your decision becomes very easy. Mm -hmm. The fact that you find uh, after some time and you can see, you can ask your assistant from outside, how is the dura? And they will say that you know, the dura is better, it starts pulsating. Mm -hmm because the brain start laxing up. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Manuel has done a systenostomy, I believe. Yes. Okay, yes. good, good. Thanks, sir. <laughs> okay. More Wang. comments, questions? Wang? Uh, hello? Uh, yeah, there yeah. he is. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, I think this stones me is uh, uh, more better, especially in uh, brain trauma. And uh, I have done this uh, surgery for more than two years, and I think it's uh, mm, it's better to uh, our uh, for our to uh, resolve the problem. And, uh, and now I I use uh, this stones in brain trauma and uh, brain hemorrhage. And the most uh, uh, patient I replace the bow. So actually, every patient I use uh, ICP monitor. So so when when the ICP monitor uh, ICP is below sixty uh, millimeter mercury, so this patient can replace the bow. But uh, if the ICP is higher than sixty millimeter mercury. Uh, the cystostomy not used uh, because uh, the ICP is uh, too high, brain is uh, too tight. Uh, and usually, so uh, when ICP is below 60 millimeter mercury, we can uh, we can uh, complete the cystostomy. So it's very bad for a patient. And uh, recently, I have a patient only cystostomy because this patient uh, have um, not. Uh, May, uh, only small uh, lacrosy in brain, but this patient uh, ICP is uh, uh, 30 millimeter mercury. At this time, I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, uh, therapy. Uh, so so I open the, uh, I have two surgery, and then, uh, then uh, open the dura in small cut. At this time, we cannot open the dura widely. So when they uh, get the CSF come out at the uh, cut lily quiz member, at the then drink, at this time, the bow replaced. So the, the patient is very, very good. So they cannot, uh, uh, they cannot use another surgery to have 
uh, cranioplasty. It's very, very good uh, effect. So I think uh, we can do some research. At uh, these days, I write some grot about uh, uh, to our Chinese uh, natural size. I, at, uh, uh, I have so I have a grot this year uh, permit by our province, uh, the Shanxi province. So so I can do some. We can do some research. At the, I or at the read some papers uh, about this uh, surgery. It's good. Well, I'm sorry, Young Hong, I didn't introduce you. Young Hong is a Chinese neurosurgeon. He heads a sister anostomy group for uh, WeChat in China. Correct, uh, Young Hong? Yeah. Okay, welcome. Okay, go mm -hmm. ahead, I. Uh, in China, uh, there is uh, many doctors, neurosurgery doctors, uh, began to do cystostomy. About uh, five cities. In five city neurosurgery, doctors began to to do uh, cystostomy surgery. Uh, every doctor they 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 have experienced good effect, very good effect. Excellent. So, good to hear. Good to hear. That's that's good. I I I like to make one point that uh, as far as the ICP monitoring is concerned, it is easy. And uh, one of the things is we have to apply it as routine. Um, so now we started doing that in our unit. Uh, earlier, all our earlier patients were completely clinical radiological assessment. But now uh, we started because of the, the so-called RCT and other things, right? You know, uh, that's the only place uh, I have a feeling that uh, we are uh, we are lacking because you know everything is depend on this whole ICP pressure. Now, um, uh, in 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 some of my patients, I showed last week. Uh, I, I I think I'm not able to get it now. I showed one patient with a subdural, and we put the ICP, and you believe me, the ICP was less than 17. The subdural is there because the patient is aging patient. Subdural get accumulated. Now the question comes. Do you really do you really rely on the ICP monitor alone for surgical uh, uh, for surgical exercise? So we need to have a balance in these uh, cases. So now we 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 recently started. Uh, uh, excuse me, sorry. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Are you? Able to, yeah. We we recently started uh, uh, now doing. ICP monitoring, uh, we, it's very useful for us. So we started working on that. Uh, I'm very happy to see the Indian doctor with uh, uh, I, the young boy. I think I'm very happy that he has come to learn. Uh, it's a good thing, right? You know, uh, the once you go back and you start doing it, that you realize uh, you not only just realizing it, then you start using the ICP monitor. You start pushing the catheter in all patients. And see and start doing it. Uh, uh, once you start doing it, you really find what exactly the world is start telling about. So I personally have I strongly believe what Wang says uh, that uh, research has to be made. The research is nothing but the collection of the data. So once we all start doing the ICP monitoring, uh, these data can be easily collected. In fact, that uh, I, I'm sure that Luzhen has got a very good data collection. Now we start having a data collection. Now IP is having to have a data collection of with ICP monitor cases, and Wang already has. So uh, the encouragement is that uh, from uh, the the neurosurgeons who are going to do and start practicing cystostomy uh, to use the ICP monitor from the beginning. Uh, so that will be very very favorable. Now in India, what I hear, uh, because I speak to various, uh, many neurosurgeons, uh, they all are doing, they all are doing a uh, system opening at the base. They are attempting because they, they are seeing uh, me giving lectures, I'm giving lectures, the papers are getting published, papers so for, and see that is a good, it is actually democratic. If you see that, you know, we, we need someone to say, 
someone to criticize it is good for us it is nice you know i was enjoying uh, all these uh, our friends uh, writing papers on dc yes we have gone through dc for so many years now we are trying to introduce this technique uh, to the world and for that we need some documentation uh, rct 100% we cannot believe but but i have a feeling that we can collect the data it is not a big problem uh, collecting uh, 200 cases may not be a big problem particularly a uh, country like india where there so many doctors uh, have all the facilities uh, for icp monitor and also microsurgery at the emergency so it is a welcome issue i is what my feeling is i i think the dr sharmagam the young young neurosurgeon uh, i'm sure that because the reason for him uh to go and see is is it is the main import that itself shows that young generation is interested to know something new so that that is the point that that is the basic point so i'm sure that he may have heard me giving a talk here and there and he knows you and so he wanted to go and see what exactly is happening i would like to see because probably it was not done in his center or it was half done so he he likes to do uh, he likes to have a hands on experience and and it's a good change so i think uh, once people start coming for example like in my institution uh, my my post graduates now everyone know how to do cystoscopy so that is the beauty my my students my senior those boys who have passed already they are in different part of the country now at least in four hospitals so they all are attempting and they are all doing cystoscopy so it is going to increase by day and day maybe it will take some some time maybe one or two years down the line i think we will have more uh, cases for data collection yep okay uh actually i think see uh, some is uh, idea progress of uh, our neurosurgery uh is uh we can apply application in brain trauma uh brain hemorrhage and brain tumor if we will replace the both so when <coughs> they open system at the drainage for several days it's uh, uh, it's safety actually especially uh, young neurosurgery uh at the beginning they do some uh cystoscopy surgery then uh, vascular surgery it's it's bad for Uh, education our uh, resident neurosurgery so uh, uh because i do some brain tumor when the uh, icp is high so i can uh, do some uh, at first we do cystoscopy and the uh, csf come out at the, the brain relax at this time uh, we can re uh, we can reduce the traction so it's bad for our brain tumor but at the, after uh, some brain hemorrhage especially uh, icp is high when clear the uh, brain uh, hemorrhage and then i do cystoscopy at this time brain is very relaxed and uh, i replace the bone so many people we can replace bone so it's bad for patient is bad for patient progress bad for patient uh, and money so it's it's very good it's very good surgery so at the uh, we can at at now uh, many people have some uh, different idea so some people uh, they can, uh, uh, they have uh, accept uh, uh, the decreasing uh, craniectomy at a uh, they uh, they need a change but uh, some people it difficult so we will do some research and we will give them better database better date at a better uh, patient effect at this time we have some conference at some lecture about uh, our ER neurosurgery and in china i have many lectures in our province and in our china so i many many young uh, neurosurgery very interested 
she sought me because I had told them, if you learn she sought me, you will get uh, progress fast. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I think it's, uh, it's a very good surgery. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Hi to all. I am Dr. Shanmugam from India. I need to say my few points, few more points. From my post graduation, I am inspired by the work of the life sir for systemostomy because I have strong aggression that nowadays traumatic brain surgery is not taken care of much. We are going in more advanced towards vascular everything, but we have not understand that traumatic brain injury is a bread and butter of our field. As any neurosurgeons, we get more cases in traumatic brain injuries, but we never step forward to advance ourselves. The age old decompression we are trying to do. And even in my post graduation and the place where I am currently working, also we are we are not uh, move forward to do systemostomy procedures because tight pain concept. You are still tight pain. We always think of saving life of a patient, but apart from saving life, DHC will do only saving life of a patient. But axial stretching is a very big pathology that makes the patient rigidity state. Post surgery patient will always be in a long term ICU, patient will have long term and deficits, other things they will develop. We never taken care of those things. What I feel, uh, the systemostomy concept, the papers which I read from IPSAR inspired me a lot to do systemostomy because that decreases the brain pressure, which comes back to its normal state. There is no axial stretching. Obviously, it's like diffuse axial injury, a uh, concept called DAI. The same concept, sudden acceleration of brain, herniation out, causing the axial stretching is more like a DAI grade one. So, patient will try to be in bed for a long time and there will be no digital state. We need to think those things to revert back rather than just saving life of a patient and make them to be vegetative state for lifelong and cost effect also. Second surgery, cranioplasty. If patients are not uh, affordable to cranioplasty, they will go for sunken flap syndrome. Others, those side effects we can prevent by keeping the bone back too. To keep the bone back, we need to relax the brain that all these effects give systemostomy. And we are concerned about only ICP, ICP, ICP. Rather than ICP, there is a concept of CSF interstitial pressure. With systemostomy, it has released that one. So, this aggression made me to learn more about traumatic brain surgery because I love trauma because we are the young surgeons. We are going to face daily a trauma case more rather than facing anusim case daily. I won't do a daily anusim case, but I can, daily I will do traumatic brain surgery, which I need to improve myself to make my effort and to make a safer life of a patient. Second thing, in anusim also same SCH, in trauma also same SCH. But in anusim, we try to open the systems, we try to do all this magical works and we say that the brain is relaxed now, uh, as it's clipped now. But when it comes to trauma, the same SAH we are not trying to deal with. We are trying to only open the brain and give the space for the compartment to come out. In that case, we need to open the system. And in this one month, I have seen a lot of cases of systematomy with SIR, which gave me more idea towards how the brain is relaxing. Around 2 centimeters from the dura, it's come down to its own position. And Aram said it's sleeping. So we can safely keep the bone back and come. Third thing, what I noticed in in my post graduation, when there's a posterior force of bleed, we try to do decompression. It doesn't only remove bone, we try to open cystina magma. In that case, accept to do cystinostomy. But in supraternal region, we are not accepting to do cystinostomy. Saying that, no, no, don't go to base. You may injure the brain. No, no, it's a tight brain. Just keep the, take the bone out. But in posterior force, we are doing it. We are trying to, the same concept applies here also. And after doing posterior force decompression with the cystina magma opening, the cerebellum has gone so lax and we are very happy to close the skin and go. So I always feel that it should be more, any surgeon should move forward to do systemostomy more. And what I have read from recent articles are Brain Trauma Foundation, which is a worldwide known for brain trauma, which I used to follow up every time. The BTF says that continuous drain of CSF is must in all trauma cases. Yeah. What does the system to do the same thing? We keep the catheter in the interpretancular prepotent system and we train to drain the CSF daily around four or five days. That automatically relieves the yeah, intracranial pressure and intestinal pressure also. So all this comes to conclusion that even the BTF saying that you need to remove systems, but how to remove systems? How to remove the uh, CSF from the system space? It's by systemostomy. I love systemostomy, and I will. I make sure that I will go and do systemostomy, and I will try to spread this news. Good. Because I, yeah. Thank you, sir. That, that's good. That's a good uh, positive thought. I am very happy. Uh, uh, I'm very happy that uh, at, uh, maybe one year down now after your uh, post graduation. Sir, so I'm working with Tirchi, sir, Dr. Ramakrishna Insurance, sir. Oh, yeah, oh, good, good. Okay, you tell RK, he knows. Um, I think he's a very good surgeon. I think he will understand. 
and uh, otherwise he may not have sent you to learn something more um you know when when we started uh, talking about this i i myself and we used to discuss a lot about uh, this uh cessnostomy um as you rightly one point you made it that there is a hesitation uh, hesitation among uh, many neurosurgeons uh, to change and to go forward in some small small uh, in small small things uh, i re- i remember uh, my postgraduate time uh, they say that you know please don't expose the spine beyond the facet joint because we are going to damage the facet joint but today what we are doing to do the pedicle fixation you have to go far away right for to do a t lift you have to remove the facet joints so there is an advancement so if you if you just stop there you expose the spine and the lamina i don't expose the facet joint you cannot move forward uh, it is something similar that is how you have explained very nicely in posterior fossa we evacuate the clot and then they open the system of magnet but this, it is a similar fact uh but there are few if you ask some surgeons they may be doing it like i i was discussing with i that i used to do sessional drain uh, for my my bi- bifrontal hemorrhagic contusion very regularly uh, because you know whenever we remove the bifrontal contusions and clot automatically it is lax and then you go back go into the and see open the optical carotid systems so you get a very very lax brain you get surprised is this a head injury patient because it's such and and you find the patients improving very very fast so it is only a small mindset that is holding on and you believe me it is going to boom up that is what my personal feeling is that some more uh, articles youngsters like 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 shanmugam now now many youngsters i can see so many yeah, young doctors who are listening from other countries when when they start doing like uh, our our friend from peru and then you start doing it and and you definitely uh, you know it is going to expand uh, so because uh, the the logic behind our neurosurgical practice or the doctors is that if somebody is doing the others have the intention or interest to learn that and to do the same so only people who don't like they criticize and they stay there that's all they would not improve so the 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 doctors who are interested to do more will definitely see through from other lectures and they try to find out and definitely they will, they will venture in i am i am seeing very positive note in india yes, i am absolutely seeing positive note in india like my friend i i always tell me that the change start for 2016 the 2016 i gave the talk in nsi uh, neurology i mean nsi conference in chennai and after that it was spoken and you believe me that now i'm very happy that by 4 years down the line shanmugam is there with you dr i so this is a kind of change that has happened in india and uh, the indian doctors try to pick up very fast you know they they pick up pretty fast so i foresee even today now when i see so many conferences i see sir one or two papers are always there free papers with uh, 20 patients of uh assessnostomy like that it is start coming up so what it going to see in future is that uh, the large number of doctors who start doing it then it becomes a routine practice so this is what i am expecting it i'm sure that uh, we will down the line if we see, speak after 2 3 years you will recollect this same uh, the incidents and then it will be the, it, it is going to happen that's what my feeling this is well precise sir actually dsc any patient you are taking for dsc is at motor power will be m2 or m3 from m3 they will improve to m5 maximum in dsc but the two days back it is on session asked to me here the patient is now obeying commands sir they are trying yeah. to estimate so the length of icu stay the cost factor the morbidity factor mainly the way i strongly feel more than the life the quality of life is more important for a patient sir i strongly quality of life is more important rather than being in bed for life life long i have saved a patient but he develops bed so it's not a point i feel so now what are in the, in this past one month i have seen six seven cases of cystinostomy back to back all they become from m3 or m4 to m6 not m5 m6 and i opening very faster and we are trying to estimate the patients very faster so, mm-hmm. so clinical improvement is better 
Very so good. this point strongly we can feel it also. Yeah. Actually, uh, actually, uh, as you said, that it is the surgery for young neurosurgeons. <laughs> it is it's a classical surgery for young neurosurgeons. Uh, as a right point, you know, the young neurosurgeons have the energy uh, to be available every, 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 all over 24 hours a day. And uh, you have that, you know, that interest and aggression to become a good neurosurgeon. And uh, trauma, trauma is the most common uh, disease and uh, is, is the most challenging all young neurosurgeons face. So I I'm personally feel that cystinostomy is, is one field is for young neurosurgeons. Sir, in every field there's advancement, sir. For a spine, it came animal university. For a brain, it became keyhole surgery. And for a, a aneurysm cases, MCA, MCA bypass cases. But for trauma, we never move forward to advancement. What is the age old concept of DHC, DHC? It will change. It will change. Uh, it but is any case of trauma as a bread and butter for us? Yeah, but, but so definitely it, it will change. No, it, it will change, uh, but it is a, it will be a small, a smooth change. Uh, that is what I'm expecting. Uh, Dr. Aif has literally struggled for nearly a decade to make people to, you know, understand. But uh, now, now there is a surge. You can ask Wang. So Wang is doing a lot of cases. Uh, and uh, Wang is openly coming and telling. There may be many friends who may be doing it, but not telling also. May correct? I, I think you must note this point. Yes, yes. There may be many of our friends who may be doing it, but not coming out uh, for, for, for peer pressure or something like that. Uh, I, I hope you understand that. You know, so yes. it, it's a possibility. Yes, so, yes. I, I know this. I, I know many who are doing it. Even with the other groups, they are doing this, they are finding it and they are sending uh, private messages. But they don't want to come out uh, on the group unless it is completely accepted. Yeah, yeah, but 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 they, I think I think it will change, uh, yeah. as uh, as like a young Shanmugam is telling. Uh, in India, is definitely we are going to see a change. Uh, I am very very clear about it because I have a very positive note on that. Uh, because uh, uh, in India, we have seen picking up uh, the the techniques pick up just like that. For example, one one thing I will tell you that minimally invasive spine surgery. Now, in the past, he knows about how fast we have moved on. Endoscopic, endoscopic brain and endoscopic spine, we have moved very fast uh, in Indian neurosurgery. So, and vascular. Today, vascular surgery is done in every city in, in Tamil Nadu. Right? It was not, the, it was not uh, done only in one place. In, in southern India, some 20 years ago, one or two, three centers were doing it. But today, it is not the same. Today in, in Tamil Nadu, uh, vascular surgery, annulation clipping is done everywhere. So similarly, it is going to happen. And uh, you believe me, you will get a lot, lot more papers and CME symposias are going to come. And I'm very sure about it. That maybe I think uh, people like I and uh, myself should, to sit only on the, um, on, on, on the table <laughs> to listen to them. <laughs> That's what I feel. Yeah. Now time to sit back and listen. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are doing it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for being there. Van, Parthi, Manuel, Sugar, uh, rest of everybody who's come. Thank you so much. It is a great response, and I believe this is. Uh, you know, the beginning of the end for decompression and And, uh, you know, we, I have been radical in some of my posts uh, in the WhatsApp groups and all that, but uh, this is exactly what I feel. Um, you know, we must not, right now, it is time for us to impose, not just sit down and uh, be calm. We must tell people, we must tell the young neurosurgeons because you know, at the end of the day, who will judge us is the patients. Yep. Patients who are thousands of patients every month going into, you know, dying or being vegetables because of an age-old surgery done by untrained residents and data collectors going on and uh, talking about it. 
okay, because of vested interest. Let us change it. Let us come together. Everybody knows how important is microneurosurgery. Let us not give the excuse of this is easy, that is easy. Why don't you do a decompression for basal antipaneurism? So, nothing is easy. In trauma surgery, we should be, these boys should be trained and they will be able to do systemostomy. All my boys, Pati's boys, everybody, they are able to do systemostomies. So, all of you now, uh, my fellows, they are doing it. But, uh, I mean, uh, from Peru, Edmundo has come and done it. Manuel has done it, Andrea has done it. So, everybody uh, can do it. It is not that they cannot do. So, it is difficult, but everything in life is difficult. Yeah. Something good you want to achieve, it is difficult. So let's not stick with that idiotic surgery which can be done by maybe a stone hammer and uh, you know a garden scissors. You can do that stupid surgery. I mean, let's not stick with it, please. Okay? Let's not say that it is easy. It doesn't require any infrastructure. Maybe it is. Uh, you know, I'm I'm being radical here, but. It is almost as good as shooting somebody in the head with a shotgun. Okay, so let us not stick with it. Let us go into micro neurosurgery. Neurosurgery is advanced, so let's not listen to all these guys who who is waiting for evidence. Okay, let yeah. they, go. they will understand when some of them, some somebody who's near and dear has a trauma, and then. Will they sit with their statistics or will they want to apply microneurosurgery? They have to answer for these patients. Okay? These patients, they are the biggest, they are, that is the biggest problem in neurosurgery right now, all over the world. In Latin America, Asia, Africa, everywhere. Only place it is not a problem is where uh, Peter Hutchison is sitting in England, it's not a big problem. So for them, whether they do decompressive, or whether whatever they do is not a big problem. It is a problem. Um, but it is not a big problem as it is for us. And of course, they have finished off neurosurgery in the West by sitting down with evidence base and other things. Let, let the same fate not happen to us. Because there, if you are incompetent, you have radio surgery, you have coiling, you have multipodality monitoring to take care of your incompetence in, in the UK. But uh, so, Peter Hutchison and the rest of his group can do whatever and they will have some multimodality monitoring and ICP and whatever, whatever not to take care of things. We don't have it. Okay. We have proactive surgery. We have good surgical technique. This is the cheapest way of doing good surgery. A trained surgeon. Remember, not gamma knife, not coiling. It's a trained neurosurgeon who is the most important thing in any setup. I have that I know I have started from the very basic. So I know all of you should, all the young guys should get trained in your surgery. And then wherever you are, you are in Nepal, you are in Dominicana, Mexico, Peru, Africa, you can do excellent work. But if you have all the infrastructure and if you are an evidence based expert, remember that a fool with a tool is still a fool. Okay? So no use. Please debunk your evidence base. Start learning surgery. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. It's correct. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I actually enjoy that. Yeah. yeah. That's de definitely is putting down a lot of people. People keep on asking, where is the evidence? Where is the evidence? I always used to uh, think about Adam and you never had an evidence. <laughs> right. You know, it is, it is a natural thing. So, um, I think that they have to, the, the group which says that you need an evidence to accept this. Now, th that is a very harsh move. Actually, they should be open. It should be open-minded. Okay, right. Let us rethink about it. Let us think about it and how to collect that, how to make it. Because, you know, we cannot sit for the evidence to come. Uh, I personally feel uh, people who are not using it, actually, they are on the losing uh, they, they are, they are, their, their people are losing the best treatment. That's what I can say. Just letting out the CSO from the basal system, if it is going to bite so much, then it is a not acceptable one. Now, anyway, I think, but I think young neurosurgeons, as as is, as I I've said, should start doing it all over the all over the world, 
and uh, start recording and uh, have a good data collection then we can pool the data in all from all the places that is what my personal feel that you have so many um, uh, friends now start doing from all over the world have a nice data collection please record it very well uh, try to use if you have an icp monitor is use it and have a good data like wang wang has done a wonderful job so yes. i think yeah, yeah so we should follow that we should follow wang has the number is very high wang's number and he has shown so many cases uh, pre pre op icp how much the moment you open the system the cs are flowing out then you can see the icp dropping out they are very good they are extremely so i also uh, uh, i mean uh, foresee the the other neurosurgeons should start using but at the same time have a good good database collected the database so when we start working on that all of us can pool and then make up a, a positive a positive thing for others also to do yeah okay hi 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 i i think uh as it was me uh take uh, three changes in our neurosurgery world at the first stage it changes our resident education we have uh, transfer the brain trauma into uh, microscope, micro uh, neurosurgery, from yes. brain trauma to micro neurosurgery. This is one change. And another change, we change our idea of neurosurgery, not, uh, not only in brain trauma, and uh, brain hemorrhage, brain tumor, we can use uh, cystosomy. And, uh, so the change is we will change the guideline of brain trauma. So we should insist, insist at this surgery. We do some research and do at the, uh, let more and more new surgery learn this surgery and uh, practice this surgery. The future is better, I think. That's all. Yep. Thank you very much. I have a question. I'm not a neurosurgeon, but Young Hong, in China, is evidence-based proof uh, a reason why neurosurgeons do or do not do cisternostomy? Uh, in China, uh, actually, Chinese neurosurgery docs follow America guideline, Europe guideline. This uh, transfer uh, America guideline to China and the transfer Europe guideline to China. So uh, actually, uh, in China, this uh, uh, evidence base is uh, uh, we have not uh, not many. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I guess we'll wrap it up, Lipo, unless you want to continue. Yeah, we must teach the Americans and the Europeans how to do trauma okay. because it's our problem. Uh, instead of uh, them telling us guidelines how to teach tuberculosis and uh, trauma, we should be teaching them how to do it. I mean, it not, should not be that the way around okay. because uh, we are experienced, we have much more cases. The rest of the world should be telling them how we treat it and instead of uh, uh, this stupid thing happening that everybody who has money will teach the rest of the world as to what is, uh, you know, what is the policy. Because all the industries are there, they, they tend to think that, you know, John, I know you are from United States, but uh, unfortunately, but the developed world, uh, always in a condescending, I have seen that so many times, in a condescending way and you know I remember to, during the first few years that I I went to present cystinostomy the kind of attitude that people showed you know this is why it has turned me you know I'm usually a very gentle person but uh, you must imagine that uh, you know the kind of things I have heard and the kind of things that I have endured in these uh, uh, past few years I have of course I never uh, kept kept myself quiet, I, I always gave it back for sure because I don't like keeping debts. So I definitely, there has been unpleasant incidences, but you know, the whole point is uh, 
it has been people have been dismissive people has been you know vengeful people and it is uh, it is not about my personal thing you know i do good skull base and vascular we have very good uh, we, we have excellent facilities for skull base and vascular and trauma surgery even now is considered to be not a great thing to do and if you say you are a trauma surgeon people look at you like oh uh, that is interesting that is how people look at you but it is our problem Asia, Africa, Latin America, the rest of the most of the world, trauma is our problem. So we must, we must be proud to say that we are trauma surgeons and not doing decompression hemicranially, but doing cystic, <coughs> doing micro neurosurgery, excelling in that, and giving hope to millions of patients worldwide instead of uh, sitting and uh, grabbing on to evidence uh, so that. Any companies can have titanium mesh put into their patient's head, ICP monitors and uh, all other things after that and rehab and, you know, dump and literally and in unkind language, you can say that converting a symmetry into a vegetable market. Okay. This is what they are doing. So let's not uh, do that, please. Let us have quality of life as, I, as a party and everybody said we have. We have to answer our patients. It's very important. Millions of patients. We have to answer them. And it is our duty to fight and to make sure it is not for any glorification or anything else. It is not to put somebody down. It is not to put, uh, I don't have any personal enmity towards anybody. If I have it, I will tell you on your face. But I don't have it. It's just to make sure that our patients will get, uh, uh, does not get a raw deal. We sleep in our homes, the young guys do whatever they want and tomorrow I come and collect data. This is not, this is a raw deal to every patient. We must come to theater, we must use micro neurosurgery, we must undergo this difficulty to do cystinostomy. The learning curve is steep. Do it and then you will start seeing the results. Thank you very much. Okay, very good. We'll wrap it up for this week. You all get a copy. And thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.